we're going to put it in our way, in our definition of what's perfect. And in a lot of situations, it's not. And like, before it's too late, I mean, when it's too late and you realize that, like, some, a lot of people realize that it's not what you, it's not like, um, it's not what that you expected it to be. Because again, getting the desired outcome out of it because you thought it would be perfect before. Anyway, I also believe that, like, because what we, I feel like just because the child is down to the they can be happy and, like, they can still enjoy life without, like, what others have to enjoy life, I guess. I don't know. Sure. And to reiterate what you were saying and what she's talking about, I think, you know, let's say that we start to unlock this stuff and... But and, well, we are starting. You know, okay, we're going to eliminate Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's or what happens a hundred generations from now? You know, you know I, I go back to, let's just say Hitler lived and we're all living in the Aryan race. I mean, that's essentially what he was trying to do. Absolutely he was. And what's left out of the conversation, and I will definitely include this when we get to embryonic, uh, embryonic stem cell research, is nature. Nature owes us nothing. So we make a change in one part of nature called humanity. Nature doesn't have to accept our... How do, nature makes mistakes all the time, people. Even out there in the non-human world, there are mistakes all the time. And nature owes us nothing. So any changes we make, nature's not obliged to agree with us, go along with us. Nature can do something really bizarre with it, like it already does. Okay, well, do you understand why I did this to you today? This is, this is ethics, and it's really thought-provoking for us to sit down and realize why we align with this, but we don't align with that. Most of what we decide ethically is based on social repercussions, not science. And if we were to make certain decisions, it seems to work okay. We accept LGBT, it's not hurting anybody, it's what you feel like, you're, 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 that's your life. On the other hand, we don't want to change the definition of a human being, even though science is clearly pointing that direction because the social implications are gigantic. Doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. But we recognize from a moral point of view, the social implications are gigantic. And for many people, we're turning the clock backwards, and that wasn't successful. So why do we want to go back to what wasn't successful? Back alley clinics, things like that. So the point of this is we're all going to we're all going to camp out in our own little camp. And we're going to have justifications for it, like Judith Thompson did. It has validity. We have to learn to live together, and none of this is going to turn out the way everybody wants it to be. And some of the implications are extremely negative, even if you don't see it coming down the road. But other times, maybe we had a bigger benefit than we thought we could have gotten for it, more bang for the buck. But if we don't have the discussion, I never bring you to the place of realizing what's really at stake here. It's not right or wrong. The consequences are much larger than who's right and who's wrong down the road. Any questions for me? Okay, this is just the facts. Judith Thompson, right to life, unjust killing, just know the law when it comes to abortion. People, I don't see why you can't get 100% on your next quiz. Okay, if you came in late, let me know you're here.